If I did not directly ask for it, I would be holding my head in my hands and asking the gods why. The crazy bastards did it again, only worse, a lot worse. Thankfully, this time it was actually a request. The emperor, however, was not so enthusiastic as I was. He stood next to me, his concubines hiding behind his regal form in terror at the human starship sitting in dry dock in front of us. It looked like a... well, since it is likely humans will read this, the ship is a slightly fancier version of the Imperial Gladiator-class cruiser. Only in the standard Terran Union color pattern and ballistic or rail guns, instead of... what were those called? Turbo lasers. Doesn't matter. They probably have those turbo laser things around somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Crazy apes. This one was called a sentry cruiser, and the humans who built it called it a giant CIWWS turret with starship engines. From what I can tell, the damn thing was majority engines and ammunition, with a crew of seven people. Seven. For a cruiser. A ship class normally reserved for crews of up to 500 members, this damn thing only has seven. Because, and I quote, If we tried to increase the crew quantity, we'd get rid of too much ammunition. The Emperor looked at me, and then the ship with a marked absence of patience. I showed him the giant M1 Garand. His expression went from calm and stoic to what the actual hell. I then showed him the giant MG-42, then handed him an enemy fleet admiral, and the remains of one of the deadliest ships in the galaxy turned into Swiss cheese. His expression became a mixture of terror and rage. I'm not sure which was more prominent. Now here we stand in front of a giant turret with engines, ready for it to face its first test fire. The Emperor's expression now a mixture of both a loss of patience and a loss of temper. The human engineers, hell even the human admiral, were staring at the glass salivating at the sight of this ridiculous beast. Mounted on the front, directly in the ship's front portion, where there should be a hangar apparently, was a gun with eight barrels. I looked to my left, and the sight of an engineer with an absurdly terrifying smile standing just a bit too close made me jump out of my socks. Yes, we Eridani do wear socks, humans. Stop giggling. I know you are. I regained my footing and growled angrily at the overly excited ape. Hey, dude. Hey. Nice, huh? He let out a disturbing laugh. This is the GAU-80, an 8-inch GAU-8 CIWS, swivel mounted directly to the front for 8-degree motion. I just looked at him, put my head in my hands and said, Why ye? Well, you did ask for a heavy defense satellite. What the hell did you want? You explicitly stated you wanted a practical, self-sustaining variant of a defensive satellite that you could use to defend your planets or critical locations. So we delivered, he said. How in the blazing... The rest of my statement was purposefully censored by my translation unit. My rant continued for a full ten minutes, most of it being expletives that not even humanity's barbarian ancestors would have used. When my rant ended, I looked around to find blushing cheeks, jaws on floors, and the Emperor himself looking at me in absolute disgust. I looked around the room and held out my hands. Well, it is still true, I exclaimed angrily, and impatiently tapped my foot on the floor with my arms crossed. Does this thing even work? I mean, how can it work? The Emperor asked. Yeah, she's been test-fired before, only for a few seconds. She's built with a prototype inertial dampening drive so she can absorb the recoil, the engineer said, pointing at small domes on the ship's hull. I'm sorry, what, inertial dampeners? I said. Well, yeah, of course. Eight-inch shells with a 5,000 revolutions per minute fire rate. We kinda have to have some dampening system to reduce and absorb recoil. That thing has some serious recoil, so we have to install inertia control systems so it doesn't fly backwards when it fires, he explained calmly. Both myself and the Emperor were wide-eyed now with the prospect of humanity successfully creating inertia dampening systems for large-scale warships and also terrified that this shit is what they did with them. Out of curiosity, these inertia dampeners, have they been tested yet?
I asked. Well, yeah, every starship in the fleet has them. I think it's like Gen 5 tech so far. They're mostly used for general purpose ship movements. Normally we wouldn't use them for this, but Big Ducker requires a big bipod. That's basically what the inertia dampening coils are on this thing. Recoil absorption. It's essentially a giant bipod and stock just really, really fancy he said simply, and used his hollow screen to show us an older technical blueprint of one. Both the Emperor and I took a deep, frustrated breath. Okay, we will talk to you about the dampeners later. First, let's see this thing work. Does it have a target, or are you just shooting into space? The Emperor asked. Oh, hell no, we got a target. These aren't just standard chemical shell casing. It's a full rotary gauss-assisted network. It's a gau 80-inch rotary gauss cannon, he said. We both looked at him like we'd just seen a ghost. Don't give me that look, he said, scowled at us and walked away to the control terminal. So how this works is a Gauss-assisted chemical projectile system. First, a mechanism sends a jolt of energy through a standard Gauss capacitor array in each barrel, then starts the spin. The chemical propellant ignites in the chamber, then gets sent out into the barrel. The Gauss effect then propels the projectile to 5% the speed of light. The small 8-inch slug hits a target with a force of about 8 kilotons of force. The engineer explained as he readied the firing sequence. Wait, kilotons? Aren't those the measurements for nuclear detonations? The Emperor squealed in horror. Well, yeah. The engineer just smiled at us like it was nothing. Eight kilotons isn't much to speak of, to be frank. Most of our ships have warheads in the 25 to 35 megaton yields. That's just the middle distance, though. The TSU New York carries a 185 megaton fusion warhead in its missile bay, he said simply and readied the console. All of the life and soul we had drained from both myself and the Emperor as our skin went pale. The Emperor and I shared a look of petrified fear and made a mental note to visit a temple to pray to whoever we could think of at the time. Even Rakandus, the god of war, would be scared right now. We didn't know exactly who to pray to. Well then, here we go. Primary target, the Lumos asteroid field. Worthless for mining, but great target practice for miners. Pretty good choice. And done. Okay, the engineer said as he typed on the console. This is Scabbard, ready for fire mission. The radio chimed. Scabbard, this is Coldheart. Fire mission clear, strike location sent. Burst fire, three seconds, three volleys. How copy? The engineer spoke. A few seconds of silence passed. Copy fire mission location 22A3.023B, 2, 2, volley shot 3 seconds, sweep shot by 2 degrees, fire for effect, came the reply. The ship fired itself up, and we all felt the massive beast clunk loose from its moorings. It moved a few hundred meters forward out of its dock and aimed itself at an asteroid field. The barrel mechanism spun itself to ridiculous speed. A perfect cylinder of whirring metal could be seen. The ship's rear engines fired to full throttle with the gun as they let loose the gates of hell. It was a solid beam of projectiles. If I didn't know better, I would swear this was a laser cannon. It fired three bursts in rapid succession, the ship moving barely inches as it spat out condensed metal alloy fragments. It suddenly stopped. Winchester, 12 seconds. 13 seconds later, there was no asteroid field. They erased it, out of existence. A bright flash of nuclear light, and then there was nothing but the cold, mildly irradiated, empty void. Myself, the Emperor, and his entire retinue then proceeded to pass out. The next few months were spent in secret, talking to the Galactic Council. Upon hearing the yield of their most powerful nuclear weapons and the fact that every human ship in the void had at least one warhead, the Saranais' longest and most ancient enemy, the Rakandi, surrendered to the Terran Union. If the Saranai did not already have a treaty of alliance with the humans, we likely would have surrendered too. And before you ask, yes, I was allowed to push the big button after I regained consciousness.